house that I've never been to before from over a thousand miles away. Like uh, literally, if you'd asked me three months ago where Virginia was, I honestly probably wouldn't have been able to pinpoint the exact location on a map. I've never been to Washington DC, well now I have, but before I had never been to Washington DC and really just haven't spent much time in the northeast of the country. Please also know, while I am extremely well traveled, I've been to over 50 countries, I really haven't explored the US that much. I've only been to about maybe 15 states and I also only became an American citizen in 2018. I never took American geography, never even really took American history. I just kind of flew through an online course that I needed to graduate. But anyways, not to get into the weeds of that, but my business partner and I bought a house in Virginia in an area that neither of us had really ever been to before. But we still felt comfortable investing in that area. And I wanna tell you how we did it and why we felt comfortable pulling the trigger. Hello and welcome to the Wonderlust Coast channel. My name is Olivia Tati and I am a short-term rental specialist and world traveler on a mission to inspire you to invest in real estate and travel the world. My goal is to build a community of like-minded millennials who have spent years stifling their creativity, break free, and take control over their lives. There are basically three key things that we made sure to do in order to make sure that we felt comfortable buying in a place that we'd never been to before. I know to some people that might sound like the scariest thing ever, and some people may think that we're actually insane, and you know, we very much well might be. <laughs> it really wasn't that scary, and I wanted to spell some of those common limiting beliefs that people have when it comes to real estate, especially out-of-state real estate investing. You really don't only have to invest in your backyard. The first thing that enabled us to buy this house sight unseen was that we did the market research. First things first is when you find an area that you're interested in, you have to do the research. We googled why people vacation in that area. We looked at how many people were visiting. What were the key landmarks that were in the area? Or is it just the national park? Are there vineyards and breweries? Are there any other national monuments that people are going? What festivals are happening in the area? How many people are actually visiting the location? You can find a lot of this information online. For example, for national parks on the national park page, you can find things on tourism boards to find actual figures and numbers. And that gives you a really good idea on how many people are actually visiting these locations every single year. And to back it up, we actually ran rental data, short-term rental data, on Air DNA and Price Labs, which are two tools that you can use to actually look at the market data and see how much people are making in that same market and how much they have been making for the past few years. Once we did our preliminary research, then we started reaching out to other investors in the area. Something that I really like to do is actually reach out to Airbnb hosts who have properties in your similar market. And you can ask them about the market that they're investing in, if they like it, what things they don't like about it, how, if, they, if they're seeing any changes in trends throughout the market. We also went on to online forums, asked other investors in the area. Bigger Pockets is a really great forum to go on if you're looking into a new area to invest in. Also, that way we could confirm our numbers that we found in Price Labs and Air DNA and confirm the return on investment that we would expect to get from a property. It's also extremely, extremely important to look at the other competition in the area to check and see if you can actually compete with whatever price point that you're going in at. You obviously don't want to necessarily invest in a super high-end market if you don't actually have the money to invest and compete in that market because then your property is going to sit vacant. So that's the first step that we took in order to feel comfortable buying a property out of state. Don't forget, if you're finding this information to be useful, I'd really love it if you could hit the like and subscribe button and the little bell notification button. Share this with friends. I'd like to help out as many people as possible and this is a new channel. So the more support I can get, the more this video can be pushed out to more folks and help other folks looking to get into short-term rental real estate investing. So the second step that we took that allowed us to buy a property sight unseen from a thousand miles away is that we quickly developed our boots on the ground team. 
Now your boots on the ground team is going to involve your realtor, your inspector, your handyman, and your cleaner. These are your key four folks who are really going to help you with the whole long distance real estate investing thing. And if you haven't already read A Long Distance Real Estate Investing by David Green, you absolutely should. It outlines everything that you need to know in order to invest in real estate long term. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't actually read it yet. Actually, I do own the book, but I haven't read it yet. And part of that is because I listen to Bigger Pockets obsessively, and I could probably outline all the steps from the book just from how much I listen to the podcast. So if you're not like me and you don't listen to Bigger Pockets obsessively, I highly recommend that you go purchase the book and read it. I'll include a link to the book in my caption, so feel free to go there and purchase a copy. But really super, 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 super important. Your boots on the ground team are your eyes and ears throughout the entire process. The realtor we chose actually used to be a commercial builder, so we felt incredibly comfortable because he went to the properties, was able to tell us anything that would be a cause for concern from a construction standpoint. Now, extremely important, especially when looking at properties that may need some kind of work. So he went and looked at properties for us and was able to identify any major structural issues that may not have been a part of our budget. I'm gonna offer in on a property super quickly because we had him there to look at properties for us. He was also able to advise us based off of location, based off of what he's seen in the market, and based off of what some of the, his other clients were doing as well. The next thing was making sure that we had a really good inspector. I myself am also a realtor and I've purchased things sight unseen even for my own personal properties because it really doesn't matter that much if I'm there. I don't have too much more value to add than an inspector who does this for a living. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna be dependent on them to provide the information that I need in order to negotiate. And during operations, your cleaner and your handyman are really all you need to run your property. They're gonna be your eyes and your ears. They'll help you turn over the property, do any maintenance calls, fix anything that's broken, balance the chemicals in your hot tub, pick up any packages, and make sure that the property is ready to go for your next guest. At the end of the day, they are the key members that you're gonna need in order to make sure that you're able to operate your business successfully from a long distance. And the third and final thing that we did in order to make sure that we were comfortable buying a property out of state was to make sure to list every single thing you'll think you'll need when buying your property. I mean everything from the light bulbs, the batteries, torches, the hot tub, every single spare bed sheet, any construction work that's going on. So for example, we had to put in AC and heating. We had to also get a quote for electricity. You wanna get all of those quotes and everything listed and laid out in a spreadsheet so that you can plan to execute that work. And you can make sure that it also fits into your budget. Now notice that you're gonna have to do that regardless with whichever property you go with. It could be something in your backyard or it could be something a thousand miles away. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You just need to make sure you have a good inspector, a good realtor, and good boots on the ground and they're gonna tell you everything that you're gonna need in order to purchase a property from out of state and then also operate it from out of state. Another thing is it helps you build your budget and make sure also to include extra contingencies. Things will go wrong, you will go over budget, so factor that in from the get-go. So I hope you found those tips to be super useful when buying a property out of state. Once again, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And don't forget about the bell notification button too. I'm literally recording like anywhere from four to eight different videos today, so <laughs> wish me luck.